In 1938, the United States passed laws outlawing child labor in hazardous industries such as mining and manufacturing. Fast forward to 2009 and Mo Yang Studios published one of the most popular video games of all times, Minecraft, a game about crafting and mining. What do these two events tell us? The children yearn for the mines. And if I have any hope of Noya being a success, it's going to need a place for the youths to excavate valuable mineral deposits from the veins of the planet. Hello everyone and welcome back to Noya Dev, the series that aims to prove that one developer can create a successful MMORPG. My name is Dane and this week on Noya Dev we're talking about mining and crafting. In a couple of previous devlogs I went into what I would consider a perfect crafting system and the work I have done to implement that crafting system into Noya. Noya has crafting recipes and crafting stations for players to make items and equipment, but so far players only have monster drops to rely on for crafting materials. Until now. I'm of course talking about harvesting nodes. Most MMORPGs have some form of mining, wood chopping, plant gathering, etc. And across all MMOs I have played, these harvesting nodes are handled in one or two primary ways. The first is treating the harvesting node like any other monster. Just take a normal monster, remove all the combat, AI, make it look like a rock, set it to check what mining tool you're currently holding, and only take one damage at a time. When the rock has been killed, the player would loot it just like any other monster. The second method is treating the harvest node like an NPC. As long as the player is holding the right tool, they interact with the rock, wait for a moment, and they get a loot roll. Each system has their own pros and cons to consider. Treating the harvestable nodes like monsters would allow me to add harvesting skills into the game, like a power strike that could break a rock in one hit, or careful excavator skill that would double the loot on the next harvest node. But not every harvest node needs to be that complicated. Sometimes I wanted the player to just be able to pick something up. EverQuest 2 had a system like this as collectibles that would appear randomly throughout the world as these shiny little sparkles on the ground. These shinies, as they were called, would be pieces to a set. Different color leaves, or tree bark, or butterfly wings, or a null teeth. There were dozens of collectible sets. When the player completed a set, it would grant them a chunk of XP and maybe a special item. But unlike harvest nodes, these shinies had no skill check. Any player at any level at any time could pick them up. After mulling it over for a few days, I couldn't make up my mind on which system I wanted to use for Noya, so I added them both. Making special flags for the monster class was super easy. I already had a way to make the monsters non-combatants, as I call them, so they won't fight back or move, and adding a few extra lines to the combat class for the monster would allow it to check what weapon it was hit with and if it should count or not. Easy peasy. Creating a clickable harvest node was not as easy. See, a monster can only be looted once, where a clickable harvest node needs to be able to have multiple loot rolls. So I decided rather than creating a whole new object type, I would add harvest and loot options to my interactable object class. I ran into a weird issue and it caused me to fumble around for a few days trying to figure out why my harvest nodes were always spawning at the center of the world. Bit of nerd talk here, but long story short, do not attempt to parent objects together when instantiating them and then spawning them using a mirror network server. Anyway, once I got that fixed, I added the new spawn mechanic for the interactable objects to dungeons and map areas, and it worked great! I was even able to make a harvesting animation depending on what tool you're currently holding. Right now I'm just using the two-handed sword animation so it looks completely wrong, but it's a proof of concept that it works. Now that I had both systems in the game, the question was, which one was I going to use for my mining nodes? Well, monsters, mining node or not, have HP and movement agents and skills and inventory, but most importantly, they are checked on by the server every single tick. So they're a little resource intensive, whereas an interactable object only reacts to the player when they are interacted with based on certain criteria. So they take next to no resources at all. As much as I would love to have 
have cool harvesting skills in game. I'm still not sure about how the server is going to handle everything, so I went with the safer option and used the interactable objects. Later on, I can look into making resource gathering a bit more interesting with maybe skills or a tech tree, but for now, it's just going to be the simple click and wait style of gathering. Now that we have harvestable nodes, we need a place to put them. And just like with the beehive dungeon, I went searching for some free D&D battle maps to use for inspiration. I usually head over to r slash battle maps and look what I found. This neat little two level mining camp map. Shout out to Tom Cartos for this awesome map. I made a few adjustments to the layout so it was a bit more cohesive for what I needed it to be and then traced it out using Clockwork Raven's mine shaft tile set. And look at that, not bad for a first pass. It will look a lot more lively once I get enemies and harvest node spawns added to it, but for now, it's pretty decent. Before I cut this video short, there is a little bit of progress on the beehive dungeon. I placed all the enemy spawns down and I worked way too long on getting this attack pattern working for the nurse boss. I want bosses to be able to dash and move to pre-programmed spots during their combat for certain special skills, and the nurse boss is the very first boss that it, to ever have an attack like that. The nurse is supposed to run to various preset spots in her room during the fight, and the problem was she was running to seemingly completely random spots throughout the room, not the pre-programmed ones that I had set for her. And I won't bore you with all the face smashing troubleshooting or the various rabbit holes that I went down that turned out to be not even related to the issue, but in the end I had a eureka moment when I decided to attach a sprite render to the preset spots and noticed that the spots were rotating around the room rather than staying static like they were supposed to. What was that thing that I was saying just a second ago? Oh right, do not, do not attempt, attempt to parent, parent objects, objects together, together when instantiating them and then spawning them using a mirror network, network server. server. I accidentally did exactly that. So the preset spots were inheriting the nurse's rotation when they spawned, causing her to seemingly run to random places. After I underped myself and my code, it now works. The attack looks like it's supposed to, and the nurse dashes around properly. Aside from that, I have the Hive Queen's primary attacks completed, and I will be working a bit more on some of the behemoth attacks for the next devlog. And that's it for this week. I've been looking at the Beehive Dungeon for the last two months now, and I wanted to look at something a little less yellow. So now we have a resource gathering system instead, and a new mining map because of it. I've already got a couple of recipes in the works to combine harvested resources with monster parts, so I really want to get them in the game for the next devlog. So I gotta get back to work. So, I'll see you next time. Bye.